So John, is there any way to manually throttle a resync? So this is something that we used to actually have in the product, but we we actually don't have any more because we don't we don't need it anymore. So if we go back to the early stone ages of vSAN, there used to be a slider bar where you could basically allocate how much of the bandwidth and throughput uh, coming out of the disks would be allocated for resynchronization versus production I/O. Um, and it really was a limiter, is all it was. Um, and that evolved to being kind of moving forward to a system that initially looked at latency metrics um, and, and also a system that basically tried to prevent some uh, kind of this noisy neighbor problem of the resynchronization. And this has evolved through several different um, logical iterations to the point now that we, we no longer need this. And instead, what we have is a system that looks at the, the throughput of a disk group and says, um, is this currently hitting a limit? Um, so if it's not hitting a limit, if we're not hitting any type of issues or there's just no resynchronizations, production gets, you know, all of the IO there. Um, but if there is a, if there is an actual contention, so we are hitting the maximum throughput, we are going to reserve a portion of that bandwidth, uh, but by no means a majority um, for resynchronizations. So in a way, being able to adapt in a much more intelligent way rather than uh, trying to adjust the slider on a constant basis, right? Yeah, and the, the challenge with those manual sliders um, on any system I've seen, and this goes back even traditional arrays that had this functionality, um, is you inevitably ended up doing one of several things wrong. Um, one, microbursts happen, and you know, I, you and I do love staring at you know ESX top and staring at performance graphs. But even our hand can't slide the slider that fast for these microburst type issues. Um, there's also the issue of what will happen is people will set the limit on, and then they'll forget it, and then hey, why is this resynchronization taking four months? Well, you know, these are the types of problems. Um, instead, we have a system, and the resynchronization logic is very intelligent. It'll look and say, how, okay, how many objects, how many streams are there? Do I need to open more TCP sessions? Do I need to close things down? Instead, we wanted a system where we, re we did the resynchronization as quickly as possible without murdering uh, the performance of the production workloads.